you guys can see better now. Um, so I've now jumped from what started out to be 800 and something, close to 900 at first for carbon dioxide presence above the vinegar, to um, a 1600 and climbing. Um, and that's just because of a reaction starting with the eggshell. Uh, and the bit of vinegar that's in here. So it's um, really interesting to see. So I'm just going to let that sit there for a little bit and we'll see uh, if anything changes in a few minutes. Um, in the meantime, I just wanted to talk about this, what's left of the egg over here um, and just uh, find out. Maybe you guys can let me know if you had a similar thing happen, but um, clearly have a, a very soft, what we call a membrane. And um, it's known as a semi-permeable membrane. So that means that it lets certain things in, but not everything in. So once you get past that eggshell, which is now gone, um, the egg white reveals the membrane that's underneath. But not only that, I want to make you guys think a little bit about why has it become such a swollen egg? Well, a the pores in the membrane let certain things in but not everything and so water has crept in water from the vinegar um, the result of that reaction part of that reaction where we just saw water as one of the products I'll flash back up to that quickly and the end products um has seeped in because what happens is there's something called osmosis where water wants to find equilibrium between two areas that it travels through. So for example, in a cell membrane, we have a similar thing happening. There is liquid, plasma, cytoplasm inside of a cell, and there are tiny pores in the membrane, and they let water in or out, um, depending upon what the need is. So if there's a greater amount of liquid on the inside, of water on the inside and then on the outside, some of it will migrate out to create what we call an equilibrium. Um, in this case, there was more water surrounding the egg than in the egg. So to find the equilibrium in the system, a lot of water traveled into the egg. Okay, so I'm now going to put the camera down for a second and I'm going to um, add my egg to this beaker here, pitcher. There without breaking it um, to be very careful um, so yeah we've got our swollen egg here I'm just gonna put the other one side by side just to show you the difference in now pour this off their sizes so you can see kind of like side by side Maybe from the outside is better. Yeah, so there you go. So it's kind of like our vinegar soaked egg is like one and a half times the size of the original raw egg. Is that there? All right, now, so um, based on the supposition that there was so much water added into the egg through its um, membrane, semi-permeable membrane, um, then if we should add a very concentrated liquid, a very thick viscous liquid that is lacking in water, that it should then soak up some of the water from the egg. And this would be putting the concept of osmosis into action. So what I brought along today just to kind of put a little ending to this and one more little experiment before it's totally over. I'm going to add some syrup. This can be done with corn syrup, uh, maple syrup. I'm using agave right now. And what you do is you basically immerse the egg in the syrup so that it kind of covers the surface of it, right? You want to make sure that it stays submerged. Go 
us a little bit more to do it. And I'm just going to use my spoon. Or in this case, my medicine dropper to make sure that it is immersed. And um, I'll secure that with a cup to keep it under there. And then I'm going to check it again either in a few hours or tomorrow, um, probably both, and see what's happened to the egg. If the concept of osmosis is working correctly, then water should travel out of the egg and into the corn syrup, making the corn syrup more liquidy, developing a uh, equilibrium content of water that's inside the egg compared to what's outside the egg, and something new and interesting should happen to the egg again. So I'm going to stop right there. Um, actually, I don't want to forget to show you what's happening here with the uh, carbon dioxide. So let's just turn that back on. And as you can see, the carbon dioxide sensor is telling me that there is over 2,600, now um, actually exceeding 2,700 parts per million of carbon dioxide in my chamber that contains the new pieces of eggshell. And if you look closely now, you can see there's definitely bubbles going on in there. And so that is probably going to keep on going for a while, proving that one of the products of this reaction between calcium carbonate and vinegar releases carbon dioxide as a product, even though we can't see it because it's a gas, but we can detect it using special sensors. Thank goodness for those. Okay, so uh, ta-ta for now. Um, I'm just going to log this information down on my data sheet. Um, let me know if you guys are experiencing any similar happenings with your egg or if you had something different happen. Okay, see you guys, bye.